So tonight we want to honor Jerry Van Dorp and his wife Sandra. Sandra is here with us. Jerry was unable to because of health reasons. Sandra, if you could just stand so they know you're here. Thank you. <laughs> Jerry and I represent exactly 50.6% of the House of Representatives leadership over the years. Between us, 37 years of the 73 that we're in right now. So I'm going to start a little uh, script here, and John's going to follow me with pictures, so you, you will want to look at the screen. As a 25-year-old, Jerry was interviewed by Board President Bishop C.M. Thurstein for the job of Executive Director. The Bishop and the boy I was only this 25 year old kid. Found instant affinity through their shared theological views, mostly about the end times. But uh, Jerry uh, realized it wasn't the end time when he started, so he had to keep going. <laughs> However, when the board hired him, they had a major reservation. Why is he still single? This, this takes a, a devoted couple from uh, all the other uh, persons before him had been married. And by this time, Sandra, who we just were introduced to, was a regular weekend visitor. And then when Sandra and Jerry married, the board offered the use of the House of Friendship vehicle, singular, one vehicle, for their honeymoon. The pictures you now are seeing show that Jerry was a hands-on administrator. He did both the managing, what Keith and, uh, and the others did here on the financial side, takes a whole team to do it now, and John and his staff. Jerry did that as manager, and he delivered all the programs. Not all by himself, but he had his hand involved in all the program delivery. Later on, you're going to see a video, and you'll see that there's an extra R in there by mistake. We, here, we apologize to stand before that. But there is no mistake, there is no mistake about the complete and utter devotion of Jerry to the ministries of House of Friendship. To him, the hostile residents were neither nameless nor worthless. They were Jerry's boys, Jerry's men. Jerry quickly became known in the community. I remember I was working for the government at the time. He was known for his passionate advocacy on behalf of the disadvantaged and marginalized. He was and is the champion of social justice. Sandra and Jerry, without reservation, let the men into their lives. The children were put into the care of the men from time to time. When their first child, Everett, was born, the men pooled their money to buy a bassinet for the family because they were on low income themselves. One day a man asked if he could take Everett or her son to the park. And Sandra said, sure, of course you can. A couple of years later, this same man came back with a gift for Sandra to thank her for the trust and to say, you can't imagine how that built my self-esteem. Sandra, Sandra, Sandra was cherished for her warm smile and non-judgmental attitude. In the early years of their marriage, Sandra was working elsewhere in the community but on weekends, she volunteered in the hospital kitchen. After a number of years, the board finally recognized this wasn't just an ordinary volunteer. She was making a very valuable contribution. So, as a way to express their guilt, they, they made, a, made a retroactive payment for the value of those services. And then she was hired to work in the kitchen full-time with Mabel Steiner, and she worked there for 10 years. This is a quote from Jerry. What I would like to be remembered for 
50 years from now, if I am going to be remembered, is for getting a treatment center for alcoholics started in Waterloo. Originally, the plan was to buy a house for the treatment, the residential treatment center, at the corner of Queen Street and Schneider. I'm just going to stop for a minute. Can you locate that in your mind? Queen Street and Schneider. Big old house there. Would have been perfect. A minor variance was needed before the permit could be issued. And so it had to go to Committee of Adjustment for approval. Approval was denied. Approval was denied. Maybe it wasn't the first NIMBY, but one of the earlier ones. People didn't want an alcohol treatment center in their neighborhoods. Not giving up, Jerry found a house in Waterloo where the immediate neighbor, Norma Sangoy, was very receptive. Some of you will recognize the name Norma Sangoy as a frequent letter writer to the editor, always on social justice themes. So it couldn't have been a better name. Although Jerry cannot be here himself in person, he has sent his best wishes. He has sent also his best emissary, his wife Sandra. And he wishes all to know he gives his full support for the Under One Roof campaign that's going to be announced tonight. He is thrilled to be part of the evolution of the addiction services continuum. As am I. And I'm sure uh, I should tell you, uh, we, we're connecting some dynasties here. Jerry, through Sandra, myself, Deb will follow me. Deb, will you please show yourself? There you are. And then John. So all of us are enthusiastic about Under One Roof. Are we not, Deb? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and you might bring a check. <laughs> So at this time we're going to see a short video of tonight's honored guests, the first legacy of, legacy of friendship receivers, Jerry and Sandra. Come on up, Sandra. We surprised together. I haven't seen it either. <laughs> it's better than the Stanley Cup. <laughs> on behalf of Jerry and myself, in recognition of our House of Friendship years. And John, thanks for your creative presentation. And I noticed the house, or the, our car got in there, you see how dedicated Jerry was to the house, and the house, the car had to tag along on our honeymoon. <laughs> this is going to sound like a history lesson to some people. In the early 1990s, Hillary Rodman Clinton popularized the old proverb, it takes a whole village to raise a child. Even though almost 34 years have passed since Jerry and I officially said our goodbyes to the House of Friendship, I remember with clarity the hundreds of people who contributed to the vibrancy and the dedication of the House of Friendship's vision of not only reaching out, but also of walking beside the disenfranchised of the community. I want to say thank you again to the staff and volunteers who, without fanfare, diligently worked long hours, endured disappointments and failures, but persevered. Also, in spite of Jerry's and my weaknesses and idiosyncrasies, you gave to us your trust, openness, and the richness of friendship. To the board members of the 1960s and 70s, Thanks for your continual guidance and confidence in Jerry for his new projects and ventures. Kudos to the wider community of individuals, churches, schools, and agencies who always responded to the request for food or monetary assistance. For example, as stated in the February 1970s News and Views, 
After a published appeal in the Kitchener Waterloo Record, Jerry says, it has been impossible for us to write notes of thanks to each person or group, but we can assure you that your help was greatly appreciated. The gifts ranged all the way from a thousand dollar check to a small bag of groceries from one family whom we had helped a year ago. Martin Luther said, I have held many things in my hands and I have lost them all. But whatever I have placed in God's hands, that I still possess. We give God the glory for his being with the House of Friendship in the past, present and future, as together we reaffirm Amos' passion in his life and thought of wanting to see a mighty flood of justice, a torrent of doing good.